country. Master Ratcliffe? Ah, Clifford. You're to England tonight? Yes, to London. I envy you. The future of England is here in the court of Burgundy, Clifford, in the person of Prince Richard of York. <clears throat> the French lad. You don't think him the real heir? He will do. He's given me some messages for you to take to London. To him? Enough of the faction to unbolt doors when he arrives. Has he? The Archdeacon? The Dean of Paul's? Mountford? Daubeny? Which Daubeny? William. And Sir William Stanley. Lord Thomas's brother? Aye. But he's one of Henry's pillars, close to the King, Chamberlain to the Royal Court. I know. Yet I'm to deliver this? As the rest. Carefully. And myself, perhaps, into the iron hand of the King? Sir William Stanley is a man of York. We have some proof that, under his court robes, in his subtle way, he may not be inclined to hinder the French lad. He's a secret and a preening man, and yet... Hase will tell you best. I'll have my servants packed. They've set up an old stag in the Royal Park that'll not run straight for them. Archdeacon Hussey. Ah, oh, Master Ratchet. Tell me, where is Sir William Stanley? Oh, there, standing by the Bailey door. I will speak to him. Uh, he attends the king. All this show and pomp are in his hands. What is not ordered by the old lady, the king's mother? When was the royal child dubbed? Uh, Prince Henry, this morning in St. John's Chapel, whilst you were on the road from Careless. So the noble order of the Bath has a three-year-old prince admitted. And the second, who is named, too, Lord Lieutenant of Ireland. Well, there's a boggy title for a king's second son. But do you not see? His elder is Prince of Wales, and now the whole kingdom is roiled over by Tudor stock. And yet the people cheer. The people have an infinite capacity for cheering. But uh, how do the Stanleys buckle to all this? Lord Thomas, his brother, is as discreet as a dead owl. Besides, the old lady, his wife, carries his fortune with hers. Being the king's father-in-law by marriage, he is well sheltered and knows when he is snug. But Sir William there... Is our friend? I hope so, though he's an ambiguous man. Ah, how is the tilty? You could do better in your priestly robes riding a gravestone. Are no lances shivered? Oh, lances are shivered. Their targets are so clothed in metal you could batter on them with a beam without waking the man inside. And they ride as if asleep, only the horses sweat. That is not jousting. Why in But the my crowd roar. Because the king fills them with drink, though not at his expense. In my young days, jousting was a man's sport, an exercise for knights. What's this realm come to? There's no nobility left. That is our subject. We are all of the same mind. Ah, yes. Who will lead armies? Why, women will be doing it next with bladders mounted on courtiers. In good King Edward's time, the courtiers were mounted on women. And now we're ridden by tradesmen and led by clerks. No offence, Reverend Archdeacon. No offence under God. Master Ratcliffe here has messages from Robert Clifford. Oh. Privately from Flanders. The Earl of For Essex. Sir William Stanley there. The Earl of Essex had a pavilion like a hill, all green. And... Sir Simon, I think at best I speak to Sir William alone. To whom? Sir William Stanley. Ah, the Chamberlain. We have messages for you through Clifford from the French lad. I'll not intrigue. Uh, Radcliffe has brought a letter. I'll not take it. No, but you will listen. Here comes the king. Lady Mother, there are new entertainments? All has been arranged by Sir William Stanley here. Will you go in? We have some words to speak. Hornings, Spray, Oxford, where is our cardinal? Ah, Sir Edward, you are set for Ireland? Yes, Your Grace. I am weatherproof. And rebel-proof too, I hope. <laughs> you will have 400 men. First, subdue the great Earl of Kildare. Our youngest son now governs Ireland. You will administer in Prince Henry's name and he in ours. Yes, my lord. We must bring our peace to Ireland and our trade to Europe. We'll make a fair mark of these islands in the world. Your Grace will not arm an expedition to France, then. My Lord of Derby, we have done with wars. Woolen cloth, 
treaties and marriage. These are our regiments in the new world. And you'll not unseat the pretender, Richard of York. His name is Warbeck. And yet many think him that Prince Richard, son of King Edward, was murdered with his brother in this tower. He is Perkin Warbeck, a gnat that nips on a summer evening and can be brushed away. We fear only the poison that may grow in the bite. My good Sir Edward, a safe crossing on the Irish Sea will keep your feet on firm ground in that slippery land. <laughs> God save your grace. There goes the Chamberlain in full sail. <laughs> there is a man will lie a beam of any great event and wait a favorable wind. I do not trust him. He crowned the king. The wind blew a crown across his bows and he used it as he thought to his advantage. <laughs> There's sourness in him. Wait here with my men, Sir Robert. I do, my lord. Lord Oxford, you walk about late. And I do not know why. Oh? Sir Robert Clifford is here from Antwerp and delivered himself to me. Where's Clifford now? I have him here in custody. On what charge? Charge? There's no charge yet, except that he's a traitor. How's that so? Early in last year, this Clifford went to Antwerp and there joined the company of that young man who calls himself the fourth King Richard of England. Is that treason? It's only that Antwerp is half filled with disgruntled Yorkists. And this young man... Perkin Warbeck. He has a company of archers with white roses in their hats given him by the Emperor Maximilian. And he displays the royal arms of England in his house as though he were enthroned. And this Clifford has spent all these months in his company. And he's now come home. Yes, he strays into my yard, bold as a goat, and fixes me with those little goat-like eyes, and then tells me that the king has granted him pardon and a safe conduct. <laughs> I come to you. Rightly. Is Clifford a man of yours? Has become so. Or rather, he's the king's pensioner. He awaits his pension and forgiveness. You are the old fox. <laughs> oh, no. Fox is in Durham, only Morton is here. <laughs> I had instructed him by messengers to present himself to you. If you will carry him by boat to Greenwich tomorrow, the king will expect you. I had thought to give you some token this Christmas. A ruby ring to wear to mass. Would you like that? I would like the peace of my lord's realm. Oh, that is sure. And a ruby ring as well. When Arthur is married to a princess of Spain and Margaret is queen of the Scots, our children shall be seals on treaties. Blood is stronger than wax, the same red stains deeper. Harry! Oh, forgive me. Mother, what I is it? News. My brother Jasper is dying. Old Uncle of Bedford, has he come to rest? He must die here. Will you go, my love? Ask Dorbany to bring him if he's transportable. He must end as he's lived in our sight. <laughs> I remember how at Harfleur he raised his banner before any other man for me when I was Earl of Richmond. Those are days I would neither lose nor live again, mother. I must be the last invader. Then keep good hold. We do. You forgive too much. Let the wounds heal. The king will see me. Who's there? My lord. Lady. You come in stinking weather. You must have news. I'm alone. News from Ireland? Ireland is an object of some mirth. Well, that's something. Mother, we'll come to you soon. Let's have it. I hear Pinings has made a clean sweep of the Irish lords and arrested Kildare. Has he indeed? Kildare? He's been packed a prisoner to England. Well, there's a parcel. This time he must lodge in the tower. We have no other fences strong enough for a ball. You have other news? I have brought, by the Cardinal's order, Sir Robert Clifford. Yes, I know. Will Your Grace speak with him? Tomorrow, in council. Yes, my lord. We shall need good eyes to read the truth in that shadowy man. Your gracious majesty. Rise, Clifford. Bray. Sir Robert Clifford, in a letter conveyed to His Grace the Cardinal, on the 8th day of November, you did declare that you had certain knowledge of diverse treasonable activities and conspiracies committed by several subjects of this realm in aid and abettance of the pretender, Perkin Warbeck, pertaining to the overthrow of our most gracious sovereign, King Henry, 
which matters you sought to lay in person before His Majesty. I did so. And that these conspiracies were made known to you in the land of Flanders and the Dukedom of Burgundy, where you attended the said pretender in private service of the King and the Council? You know that to be true. Thank you. Right. What conspiracies? Your Majesty, having obtained the credence and trust of that pretender through my own pretense of being of his faction, as I was bid, I learned much from him and from his entourage, which I have since verified. Much of what? First, my lord, that he was promised by the Emperor Maximilian and the Duchess of Burgundy the means of crossing the sea and landing in this realm with men and arms. That we know. And that in this he may be aided by the throne of Scotland, whose envoys came several times to Antwerp and with whom I spoke. This we believe. Other springs of discontent are being tapped in Calais and here in London. Who in Calais? The Lord Fitzwalter is the principal. You know that? I've read his letters and have copies here. Yeah, we'll see those later. Who disaffects in London? Some of the church and some of the court. The clergy Lord. have no cause to hate us. Who of the court? My liege, I feel that by pointing the finger I may give offence. Your offence is in their act, not your intelligence, if you say rightly. Among them is a kinsman of that lord, William Daubeny. That comes close home. What proof have you? They all communicate with Warbeck. I have brought letters. More copies. Some in the original. And all these men will rise if Warbeck land. Oh, yes, they are sworn to it. We must examine this. There have been no murmurs. But here, close to our court. Closer, sir, than I have said. What more? I have proof, sir, against your security. We had thought this realm at peace, but this is a catalogue of some discredit. Or is it but an adding up of malice? It will stand inquiry. I've only done as I was commissioned. And will be rewarded if it is proved. It cannot be proved. Oh, yes, Your Grace, it can. Oh? That is all. We asked. That is all? There is one other. Who? Oh. I hesitate to name so great an officer. One of your counsel, brother of an earl, he is not here. Sir William Stanley. The Lord Chamberlain. The first of all. That is not true. Last March, my liege, before I went to Flanders, Sir William talked with me, gave me messages of good hope for Warbeck, begged me to be his intelligentsia and send reports back. Which you have done. From Time to time, yes, for her appearance. It is not possible. I knew your grace would not at once credit it, or I would have named him first. If it is false... I stand in danger. You do. But I have witnesses who speak on oath. Oath! That is enough poison for one sitting. The air in here is foul. When you've read the depositions, come to us, Bray. We shall not easily believe this man. Sir William's brother, Thomas, Earl of Derby, is part of this? I think he does not know, my lord. Well, what do we do? I think this business started must go up. Do you believe in it, Bray? It touches persons least reliable, most easily estranged. The church? Is jealous of sanctuary and privilege. And other men play games while we work. Will your grace proceed? Do you think Sir William Stanley plays games? We will move our court to the Tower of London. Summon Sir William to attend us as Chamberlain. scarcely breathes. Uncle? His 
left us. Goodbye, old man. God light your wandering. He has taken my youth, mother. Your Royal Grace. My uncle of Bedford is dead. I agree with your majesty. He was an old man. Yes. You sent for me. I am here. I am surprised you hold court in this gloomy tower. I had thought you were at Greenwich. It is convenient. Are you honest, Stanley? I hope so, my lord. So do I. If you were a man painted on glass, I could see through you. My lord? You are too opaque. I would have you in a window. Oh, your grace is whimsical. But not inconstant. I was once your suitor. What do you mean? The night before Bosworth, I rode alone to your camp and begged your help against Richard of Gloucester in the field. Which I gave you. Only when Richard was so placed by his own rashness that you were sure of his overthrow. I did not stand by like Tom. I proclaimed you king and have served you nine years And since yourself. I have some property in Wales. I am no earl. But you would be. Your Majesty has summoned me to carp at me. Now, why should you carp at that? We are no fish, sir. We are your king. Do I not know? I made you king. You made us not, nor since have loved us. Oh, love's in the heart, sir. It is not a duty. It's not in your heart, is it, Sir William? I am no flatterer. But you flatter Warbeck. I do what? Oh, Stanley, how can I know your mind? Did you or did you not, last March, send messages by Sir Robert Clifford? I did not. And are you honest? Who says that I did? His Grace, the Cardinal, has intelligence that you and others have compounded with that boy. The Cardinal has spies in every kitchen. They'll serve what dish he chooses. We did not credit it either. For one thing, we did not think you such a fool. The French boy is nothing. Well, there is proof, it seems. What proof have they? Enough evidence to stand examination. I am to be charged? I, who am the staff on which your household leans, I am your trusty servant. We don't know that. There are men of whom we would more readily believe it. What can I say? Nothing to us. You shall answer to a private court. We shall command Oxford, Bray, and Morton, and others to investigate the whole matter. There is as yet no writ against you. If there is no charge, I may be about the court. We meet the new year at Richmond. You will stay here in the tower. A prisoner? Digby, the lieutenant, will be your keeper until we've measured your honesty. I will have law. There you are, Sir William. The room is bare, but you may furnish it. It's cold. It is the cold season. But firewood and light will cost you but five shillings a week. This is a good room. When you've ordered your furniture, you'll be well set. And you may have servants, ten shillings for two. The others, poor gentlemen, are housed in Newgate. What now, if you were committed, the treasury should pay your food and so forth, but since you are merely lost... The others are in Newgate. Why, the Dean of St. Paul's, bless him, and other clergy who find it something like hell. <laughs> and there are gentlemen, Sir Simon Mountford, I hear, and Master Daubeny have been taken in, together with other lesser men, servants, and so on. And await trial. They stay at the King's pleasure. Not, I think, at theirs. <laughs> you have good light in that window. You will see the sun of an afternoon. I should it shine. Would receive friends. Uh, you may ask. But whether it be granted depends upon the king. We all depend upon the king. We do that. And he depends upon God. And he, I sometimes think, depends on whether he is awake or asleep. <laughs> 
Um, about servants. Yes. Uh, there is a prisoner, well, there are two, but one I have in mind. He is too young for Newgate. Uh, they will corrupt him. If he's not already corrupted? He's a boy, a youth, and a very good servant. He'll serve you very well. Master Thomas Astwood, the steward of Martin Abbey. I have asked for him. I am in your hands. Yes. I will have him brought to you. Though why I should be kept here? But I've done nothing to offend our king. They all say that, sir. So there's the wound. How deep? It cuts to the court. Even to the chamberlain? Sir William Stanley has been brought before us. To what effect? There is evidence, by word of mouth, that he'd be willing to have Warbeck come. And crown him king? Do you believe it, Bray? I think that Stanley waits to see which of the opposing sides will gain him most. He collects factions as he gathers gems, and does not wear them till the occasion's right. This was always a proud, uncertain man whose service we have bought with a high office which answers not to his ambition. He is, my lord, the richest man of York. His land lies at a wild edge, near waters that have been stirred up before. In any rebellion, he will be a power, a head. He wrote letters? None that we have found. And you have examined all the witnesses? We have. The Crown's case would stand. But all this may be mere suspicion. Still, we daren't keep him. So he must lose his office? And then what? Retire to his estates and plot for sure. Unless we distrain them. I most likely send him into exile. No, where there are enough broody Englishmen in Flanders, we'll have no more. He must be attainted and condemned. Of treason. The King's Bench can do it. We may then pardon him. That is the royal mercy. Much used of late. Punishment will lose its force if you hold its arm. We will not rule in blood. Except it be necessary. Let the law speak. Let it determine to be writ for the mayor to try the others with a full court of lords, judges, and aldermen. And if the case goes against them, Stanley shall be tried at Westminster. Pay Sir Robert Clifford in reward a thousand pounds. The five hundred will suffice. The five hundred, then. And keep your ears open, my old friend. We do, sir. So, we're to be tried Friday. Who? Thomas? I. And them as lie in Newgate. Ah, then you'll have to lie. Oh, we'll lie, sir, don't fear. Unless a priest be confessors. But to stand accused with an ounce of fish in your stomach, why, well, sooner it was Thursday when I could have eaten meat and pleaded like a man. Do you reckon they'll hang us, sir? No, Thomas. I think they won't. And you're not to be tried? Ah, my turn comes later, if at all. But I've done nothing. The king wants merely my mother. They say he has a great habit of trying men and then letting them go. That he may prove his point and show his mercy. A people are lover. Is it likely? I think he may hang one or two who have made some move. Well, not such as me. I'm a steward. I do what I'm told. Pocket your fear, Thomas. This trial is a mere show. I know how the world works. A month today, we'll all be walking free at the winter's end. <laughs> the Earl of Kildare has a north-facing room overlooking the town wall. Oh? And would have pleasure in talking with you, the warders say. I do not know him. Oh, he'd be good company for your lordship. The lieutenant will allow it, if you ask. They say he's a rare animal with a good wit. An Irishman. I do not know him. You should, though. We get broody, your honor, waiting alone on judgment. Huh. It's a hungry still time in the country, with the grain going and the food salt, and nothing stirring at the edge of the woods. Oh, I wish I were there. Are there wolves in Denbyshire? Oh no, the shepherds have killed them all. <laughs> we used to have wolves when I was a little boy. I didn't see them, but I could hear them, and the dogs wouldn't bark. No. They find them still to the mountains to our west, but my estates are well manned. Your lordship won't be needing a steward, then, when <laughs> we're free. Thomas, there might be some place if you hold your tongue on Friday. Oh, thank you, and I have a body left. 
Oh, God. May they not touch me. Thomas. Try to go into a man. And let me read. If you met the Earl of Kildare, Sir William, you could be more merry. Or more wearied by him. You're not afraid? Thomas, my brother's wife is the king's mother. He will not hear you. He says that William must be tried. If the rest are found guilty. Oh, it is bad, counsel. How can you let this be? You're the queen, the king's wife. He will not listen. Oh, you'll hear me. When we married, Thomas, and when you and my son were wed, we joined the hands of Lancaster and York, oh, first out of policy, but then in love. We are his family. You must not use your brother in this way. I have implored him. And you, no doubt, have sighed. But I will tell him. Now, leave me as he comes. Will you let me pass, Mother? My son? Mother, I am busy. Hanging your wife's people. I do nothing like. And my husband's brother. You've heard about Sir William Stanley, then? As who has not. He is mild and inconsequential, if a little vain. You cannot fear him. Nor rely on him. He's been loyal to you, as have all the Stanley. He has been grudging. Mother, you've always told me that I am too lenient. What am I to do with a chamberlain who plots with rebels? There is proof? Some doubt. Then give it him. If he but thinks treason, there are others guiltier. More active, not guiltier. I shall not murder him, Mother. He will face law. If Thomas or I could see Sir William and speak with no, him... No, you'll not interfere. I've always helped you. Not always. I will send Morton to him. If he find any mood of loyalty in the man, we'll think again. Hello, Chamberlain. You comfortable? In neither mind nor body. Yet you have some good things. Oh, ordnance merely from my London rooms. Ah. What a beautiful piece of silver. Ah, oh, yes, that is German. Ah. You see on top of it, Kronos is talking to Ares. <laughs> yeah. And that piece there is new, it's English. Yes. And uh, this? Ah, from Flanders, yes. Small but delicate, don't you think? It brightens a dull wall. Mm. Ah, an engraving. Unusually done. Yes, by a young man of the school of Nuremberg. Hardly known as yet. Mm. Profane, but it has spirit. Uh, noble Lord the King has let me come. To make an inventory? I am no bailiff. You know what the King wants. Mm, my money. Ah, I hadn't thought of that. He wants good servants. Are you one? Unless it is proved otherwise. You, my Lord, were at Bosworth too. We were his first men. Some of us were earlier. Have you read to Warbeck? No. Or shown him any partiality? Have you? I am not named, Sir William, but you are. By your intelligence that the King may beggar me. Could I but bring his grace some proof of your good course? What proof can I give? The charge might be lessened. And I might be robbed of less. Such is your life. You and the King have put this on me for the privy purse. You lose me, sir. Nor you nor he can bear to see a man grow fat. All the nobility are mulked, merchants, tax, gentlemen squeezed of feudal rights, and the royal treasure grows and grows and makes hirelings of all. I have underpaid no dues, evaded no redemption, but the King courses me because I am rich. This is a hunt for sport, but it is a contrivance no judge will accept in public court. This case against me has no document and is without any respected witness. Do you blame the king? I blame your policy, my most reverend grace. This is a shearing to fleece another sheep, that you may have more money for bribing spies to slander honest men. You are too windy, sir. Her thing will not bring you home. But mercy may. 
and some humility. I am not humble. Would you like your lady wife to visit you? <laughs> she is not well. She cannot cross the country. Or any of your children? If they are by. Since they have grown, I have not seen much of them. It can be arranged. No, spare your time. I'll go free to them, though it cost me a fair fine. You and his majesty may compute it, and I'll pay for my innocence. I'll tell him so. Sir William. Yes, Thomas. I have brought his lordship of Kilfair. Oh, Thomas, not at this moment. To cheer you, sir. Well, Stanley, we'll meet in the pound, as we may in the stocks. Is there enough friendship among prisoners? I count my friends. Well, count me. And mind my tongue. Oh, my lord, you are welcome. <laughs> Do have some wine, Thomas. What do you see from here? Hill. There's none but roofs from mine. This room's light up. Who's that who leaves? It is the cardinal. That creaking old man. Is he your friend? No, he's a tax collector. Well, you're not come to see you about your soul. Hardly. I am in debt to Mammon, three thousand pounds a year. <laughs> that is a lot. Sir? No, Thomas. <clears throat> You've a fine place out here on the Welsh border. Finest, warmest gentleman's house in Denbrookshire. Uh, not like this damn place. Uh, smells of rotted flesh. <laughs> Why are you here? The king would replace me if I are you. <laughs> he has replaced me. <laughs> the Irish parliaments attainted me, <laughs> with the English bowmen pointing arrows at them. <laughs> They'll have me back. He can't pen us along. Oh, they pinned Warwick here these nine years, and they'll do more. The boy's defected from it. I oh, will make a king of him for all that. Or oh, Warbeck. Or another. Matters little. Thomas. Out. Hmm? Now, no, let the lad stay. There's too much silence. No, Thomas. Hmm. When I saw Warbeck, he seemed a likely lad. As good as the next to sit through a ceremony. <laughs> what word have you given him? Only that if he be truly Edward's son, I'll not bear arms against it. And if he's not, you'll keep your place. What else? You play it both ways. Oh, my lord, who does not? I am mortal. <laughs> <laughs> and I am master of Ireland, or I am nothing. <laughs> They'll have me back. I can wait. Unless Henry murders me. Oh, murder is legal now, my lord. They do it by jury and call it Tudor law. Why, then, did you declare for Henry? Because, when he was young, he seemed pliable, modest, took direction, courted and flattered us. He came supplicant to me the night before Bosworth and said he'd make me Earl of Chester if I won his battle for him on the morrow. Promised me. And in the morning, when his troops were stuck in the marshes being massacred, I loosed my men, 3,000 of them, all in red jackets with the white heart on them. And they ran over that field like blood. And when Richard was killed, I seized the crown and I crowned this man by the grace of God of England, Ireland. Oh, your brother Tom did. No, it was I. You got no elder. Chester, my lord, is a county palatinate. It's a little kingdom. In the old days, all great men of power were powerless, and the king was a mere centre around which the world revolved. Edward knew that. But this Tudor's a Lancastrian, writ big, a cuckoo that sits in our tree. Then we must mob him out. Oh, I've often thought of it, but stayed my hand and... No. We've no power. Oh, good God, man, you're well placed. Your friends, relations, relatives, followings in the court and in the provinces. I did much more in Ireland with less means. Well, I'm released. Oh. I don't know. A chance may never come. Oh. These. Welsh winters, all English flowers die. Romance and chivalry are dead, nibbled away by heretics and 
shepherds. And greedy kings. What has the court found? All who were tried were convicted and will be sentenced to be hanged. The priests as well. Did they confess? All, oh, save Robert Redcliffe. The priests may wait pardon. We'll not estrange the church, Lord Cardinal. Thank you, sir. I have seen Sir William Stanley. And he says? He admits nothing, but would pay a fine to hold you off. He'd bribe us. We know he does connive and would do more. Did the confession speak of him? No, Your Grace. No letters found? No. Then he must go free. But, my lord... Your grace expressly said... That he should stand trial... If the rest were guilty. As they are. Is there less mercy in the mitre than in the crown? We've saved your priests. And I would save the kingdom. Factions are luxury. We must cut out, if needs be, with a knife. This is a kinsman. And you have a poor case. Kildare was loose to him. And straightway he talked treason. May we believe this? I have it from Master Digby and his proved witness, sir, that they do plot together. Stanley and Kildare. Ireland and York. Two disaffected men. Let Sir William Stanley have fair trial. By all his peers. We might as well throw him to the dogs. Still, he may persuade them. Mountford up. Ratcliffe beside him. Daubeny. There's no fourth. Why do they cheer? The young Thomas Astwood is pardoned. For his extreme youth. Oh, that's the, uh, the boy that was your servant here. Huh? It is. You remain, my lord? Yes, dear. It is not for his youth that Estwood is poor. No. I was guarded tongued until you came. But he was here when we talked what might be called treason. <laughs> Don't believe you. We spoke in general, not particular. Any tapster may call the king a rogue and keep his head if he's not specific. Then why is Estwood saved? Well, Henry knows how to be popular. You may succeed at Westminster. No, no. It'll go against me by the book. It's by now rehearsed. I... Feel some doom. Take this to the Lord Chief Justice for him privately. Where well, this is treachery lie, but in his mind. This bench, in the name of the King does rule and deliver that William Stanley, knight, for the abominable and detestable treasons proven of him against his majesty in this realm, shall of this court be convicted and condemned of high treason, and shall have and suffer pains of death, loss of goods, chattels, debts, farms, and all other things, and be taken to a place of execution, drawn and quartered in most convenient time and speed. I am not guilty. Sir William. You have news? Yes. From the King? Yes. I am free. His gracious majesty, in his mercy, commutes your sentence from hanging and drawing to less painful execution. I am to be beheaded. On Monday morning at 11, here on Tower Hill. Mm. No pardon? While you live, you've hope of that. There's a commission set to inquire into your lands and possessions and take charge of them. He'll not have them and my head. I do not know. There's a priest here to say mass. 
Sie mir hin. Oder Evans? In God's name, Sir William. I'm on the edge of the pit. I, I look, I, I think uh, for my short walk on Monday, I'll, I'll wear these. This uh, cloak, this tunic, and the belt of gold. Um, these hose, they're new, and those shoes, and this cap of green velvet with the white heart on it. Do you think uh, I will dress suitably? It will pass the time for you. I shall be pardoned, of course, on Tower Hill. Others have been. I hope you may. If not before, I have powerful friends and am paving other ways. Oh, yes. Yes. I'm quite sure. When does Warbeck come? That is not yet known. But there is another plan, if that miscarry. I will not plot now. Certain gentlemen travelling in Rome have met an astrologer oh. who can kill the king. But this man wants more money than they can pay. If you would give... I will not conspire now. A jewel, a ring, perhaps. Oh, what are we brought to this? That we hold superstition like a sword and think it potent. We are modern men. I have been loyal. Indeed. To the king. Till now. The church may have it. No, God and men do what they will. And now I will confess you. No. Oh, I've not sinned much since we last met. There's little occasion here. And no sinful thoughts. Oh, is thinking a sin? In the head lies all the future and the salvation of men. And to have it lopped off seems to me an old blasphemy I hoped we had grown out of. Do they cut it? Of course they cut above the collar of your coat to spoil the cloth, else I'd never looked closer. The king will forgive you. He has made his point. Yes. Yes, of course you will. <sighs> if word comes not before I reach the scaffold, I'll wear my gold belt. And then when the pardon is made, I'll give you that for the church in thanksgiving. You'll be there. I will. My lord. You grieve for something. I'll not be weak. What hour is it? It is near eleven. I wish it were noon. Word from the king? No. You are waited on. I am I, uh, my chain. Um, oh, oh, my, my gold belt, my gold belt, my, my chain, um, oh, uh, where, where, where are my shoes, uh, oh, my chain, where is my chain, someone has taken it. You must come. I cannot come. I am... Not ready. There. Do I? Am I right? You look well, so will you. Oh, if only I Their find... lordships wait. Is 
Too bad. I... I... will have dignity. Gentlemen, what word from the king? There's none, Sir William. <laughs> Will you not kneel? I am not ready. My mind is not dressed to meet death. We can see from here, my lord, we are in time. I'll not look. Now I see. Huh? Is it done? Yeah. This room's as swiftly vacant as he who's gone from it by the king's will. Your lordship may stay in the good light. Yeah.